Now, when we talk about local anesthesia, per se, uh, we're talking about providing anesthesia uh, pretty much to the soft tissue in a very local area. Uh, that's sort of when you, you know, put the needle in a spot, you make an injection, uh, and it has its uh, effect in that very local area. And that can be good, uh, but the thing we're going to be talking about today, uh, rather than just local anesthesia, are, are what are called regional anesthetic blocks. Now, regional anesthetic blocks uh, are defined as where we block the nerve supply, not just to a local area, but to a whole part uh, of the body. Uh, for example, in this, uh, if you see my little arrow wiggling around here, uh, if we put our local anesthetic agent right here, which is exactly what we're going to do for the cranial infraorbital block, uh, and block this nerve, we're actually going to block this whole uh, area or part of the body uh, by simply sort of blocking the nerve at this point. So that's the concept of a regional anesthetic block. Uh, a benefit of providing regional anesthetic blocks is that uh, if we sort of use that in addition to general anesthesia, we can in reduce uh, the amount of general anesthesia required during a procedure. Uh, meaning if, you know, you're keeping them on two isoflurane and then you provide a block before you start uh, doing some painful oral surgery, you're not going to have to turn that isoflurane up. Uh, and, of course, uh, that has the benefit of uh, having uh, better blood pressures if you're not using the uh, excessive amounts of general anesthetic agent. Uh, we're also providing analgesia, especially if we're going to use a long-acting agent like bupivacaine, for up to six hours after the procedure. Uh, so your patients are going to be waking up more comfortably. They're going to be going home more comfortably. You're not going to be getting that call at home at 7 o'clock at night that your patient is screaming after his dental surgery because uh, your patient's uh, sitting at home kind of numb and, and doing, uh, doing just fine and being just happy. Uh, and finally, uh, you know, if you're used to having your patients wake up from oral surgery uh, and screaming and then you have to reach for the narcotics and then they're all stoned and you're, you're not, I'm not saying that you should not use a, a balanced anesthetic approach. Uh, you should always provide narcotics, but you won't have to uh, have the need for excessive uh, post-operative narcotics if you're doing your blocks properly. So let's talk about these intraoral regional anesthetic nerve blocks. 